Hello, hello, and welcome to our Toronto. And I'm your host, Tony, in a city as vast and complex as Toronto. Public transit is more than just a means of getting from point A to point B. It's a lifeline that affects everything from economic development to the daily quality of life for residents, perhaps one of the most significant impacts that transit has is on real estate prices in a city where housing affordability is a constant concern. Access to transit plays a crucial role in determining property values, both for home buyers and renters Toronto's real estate market has been on a wild ride for years, and transit development has consistently been one of the biggest drivers of price fluctuations. In the world of Toronto real estate, Proximity to subway lines is like gold dust homes and condos near a subway station, are consistently priced higher than those farther from the network for prospective buyers and renters. Living close to the TTC's subway lines means convenience and shorter commutes, making these areas highly desirable. The so-called subway effect is most evident along major lines, such as the Young University Line, Line 1, and Blur Danforth Line, Line 2, where properties near stations like Rosedale, York Mills, and High Park command a premium, these areas benefit not only from transit access, but also from being in established neighborhoods with high demand, however. Even properties near stations in more suburban or less centrally located areas, like Shepherd Young or Kipling, tend to see higher property values than those in transit deserts, according to real estate studies. Homes within a 10-minute walk of a subway station tend to be priced anywhere from 10 to 20 percent higher than those further away, and as the city's population grows and traffic worsens, the value of living near rapid transit only increases. While subway proximity provides the most dramatic impact on real estate, other forms of transit, like light rail and bus corridors, have their own effects, though more gradual the ongoing development of the Egelinton Crosstown LRT scheduled to open in the near future, has already led to rising property values in neighborhoods along the route areas like Leaside, Forest Hill, and Mount Dennis, once considered more affordable compared to downtown, are seeing an influx of interest as home buyers and investors bet on the future convenience of light rail access, the same can be said for the Finch West LRT and the planned Ontario line. While the full effects of these projects won't be seen until they are fully operational, Real estate agents and developers are already marketing properties as transit-connected hubs. What's fascinating is how speculative real estate markets can be. People are willing to pay a premium for something as simple as a planned transit stop that may not exist for years while buses have a more limited impact on property values compared to subway or LRT systems. Express bus routes like the 939 Finch Express or the 905 Egelinton East Express have played a role in making outer. Suburban neighborhoods' more attractive bus service doesn't deliver the same price bumps as rapid transit, but consistent and reliable routes can still make a location more desirable, particularly for middle- and working-class homebuyers. For all the benefits that proximity to transit brings, it also sharpens the divide between desirable, high-priced neighborhoods and more affordable, but less connected areas transit deserts, or areas with limited or no access to reliable public transportation are often where the city's most affordable real estate is located. Scarborough is a prime example for years. Residents of Scarborough have complained about the lack of efficient transit options. With the aging Scarborough RT Line 3, serving as a symbol of the area's neglect in transit planning as a result, while property prices in Scarborough are rising due to overall demand in the city, they remain lower compared to neighborhoods near the downtown core or along subway lines. This means that areas farther from transit, where residents must rely on buses or cars, remain some of the last bastions of relative affordability in an increasingly expensive city. However, the completion of new transit infrastructure, like the Scarborough Subway Extension, promises to change that dynamic once completed. The subway extension will likely raise real estate prices in the area, following the same trend seen in other parts of the city. Where new transit lines have been introduced this, of course, raises concerns about the displacement of long-time residents and the gentrification of historically lower-income neighborhoods. The impact of transit on real estate isn't just limited to homeownership. It plays a significant role in Toronto's rental market as well. Renters are particularly sensitive to transit access since many depend on public transportation to commute to work, school, and other daily activities. Apartments and condos near subway stations or major transit hubs see higher demand. 
leading to higher rental prices. Areas like Liberty Village, Young and Egg Ellington, and the newly developed neighborhoods around Union Station are prime examples of how proximity to transit can drive up rent in the condo-heavy areas of downtown Toronto. Being within walking distance of a subway station or major streetcar route can mean the difference of hundreds of dollars in monthly rent. Transit improvements also have a direct effect on the development of new rental properties as the city plans new transit routes. Developers flock to build rental buildings near future stations, anticipating that tenants will pay a premium for convenience this has. Been the case along the planned Ontario line, where developers have been snatching up land and securing permits in anticipation. Of the line's completion, with rising real estate prices tied to transit development comes the inevitable issue of gentrification. As previously, underdeveloped or lower-income neighborhoods become more connected to the transit network. They become prime targets for developers and investors, driving up prices and often pushing out longtime residents' neighborhoods like Parkdale, Leslieville, and parts of Danforth Village have all experienced this phenomenon once. Working class or immigrant dense areas, they are now seeing an influx of wealthier home buyers. With real estate prices rising accordingly, transit access makes these areas more attractive, but it also makes them less affordable for those who have lived there for generations as a result. Displacement becomes a significant concern. With transit becoming a double-edged sword in Toronto's housing landscape in Toronto, Transit and real estate are inextricably linked proximity to rapid transit, particularly subway and light rail lines, has a profound effect on property values, rental prices, and the overall desirability of neighborhoods as the city continues to grow. And new transit projects come online. This trend will only accelerate, however. The benefits of transit-driven development are not without their downsides, the rising real estate prices near new transit lines can lead to affordability challenges and gentrification, creating winners and losers in the city's ever-competitive housing market. In a city where transit is the backbone of daily life, its influence on real estate will continue to shape the future of Toronto. I hope that you liked the video. If so, please give it a like. If you're not subscribed and want to be notified of new videos that are released, please click on the Art Toronto button here. This is the video that I would recommend for you to watch next, and I'm sure that you're going to love it. Here's the playlist for all of the latest in transit news and views that you're going to find very informative and interesting. And finally, here is the latest video. Thanks for watching and happy transiting.